Hey, welcome back to the Engineer Channel. Today I want to share with you my 2005 Honda Goldwing 30th Anniversary Edition in the most amazing blue. Isn't it beautiful? Would you believe that this bike is 15 years old? Come on back and I'll tell you more about it. So when it came time to look for a great touring bike, it's too hard to look past the Honda Goldwing. It's really the king of the touring bikes. Uh, I've ridden lots of other bikes. Everyone rides different. You can watch some other videos and watch touring bike uh, videos to see how maybe the Yamaha rides versus the uh, the uh, Honda or, or even a, a Harley, one of the Road Kings. I've had a Road King as well. They're different experiences. But for me, for riding long trips, man, it makes my tailbone hurt, man. So. I wanted something that was uber comfortable and this is the king of the road when it comes to touring. This bike, 15 years old, has 100,000 miles on it. You think, oh, that's worn out for a motorcycle. Well, it's really not for a Goldwing. A Goldwing, like I said in the other uh, before, the, uh, the, the engine doesn't really rev that high. It makes maximum horsepower. This bike in particular makes about 118 horsepower at 5,500 RPMs. So, you know, a, a regular sport bike might make, make, make that kind of horsepower at something like 13,000 RPMs, over twice as fast on the engine. So these engines don't get worked that hard, and so they last a long, long, long time. Another nice thing about buying used bikes is there's a ton of accessories for the Goldwing on the market. If you buy a used bike, chances are it's going to have a bunch of those accessories already on there that you don't have to pay for, and they're expensive little accessories. For instance, this one has LED wheel covers on the dual front uh, disc brake setup. Uh, so it's got those chrome disc covers on the front. It's got a slipstream uh, windshield, which is a little bit wider than the factory windshield. It has about a six, six, six inch adjustment to it. So it, uh, it's really a nice little addition to it. One of my favorite additions is this is just this, this little Kiryakin um, backrest. So if your passenger wants to get on, flip it down, easy on, flip it back up, and you've got the comfort for the rider, and it matches the, the stitching pattern, is the same pattern as the back seat and the front seat. So that's already on there, a nice, nice accessory. The chrome luggage rack on the back, uh, antennas, uh, on and on. So you get a lot of this kind of stuff uh, at no really extra charge because when they go to sell their bike, they're not getting their money back on those accessories that they've added to the bike. So the most notable thing about the Goldwing has always been the engine. This is a GL1800. This is Gen 5 Goldwing. These came out in 1975. This is 2005. This is 30 uh, years into the run. Uh, this is an 1832cc uh, horizontally opposed flat six. So the cylinders, you've got three here and three on the other side, run in a, pair, uh, a flat plane here, low in the engine, or low in, rather in the uh, frame, which makes the center of gravity really low. This engine is balanced and it's, it's got two valves per cylinder and it's fuel injected and it's unbelievably smooth. Uh, let me show you. So I always heard that you could put a nickel on its edge while the gold wing is running and the vibrations would not, if they're so small, that the nickel will not fall over. There you go. This bike is running as you can hear. You see how much is moving. It's not moving. Uh. So delivering 118 horsepower, this little engine really pushes this big bike, which weighs 900 pounds. It pushes it down the road pretty swiftly. Uh, it's it's uh, pretty quick. You know, I would, I, would, I would classify it as a sport touring. The engine being low in the chassis also allows you to uh, handle really good and maneuver quickly. Whereas, you know, you've got, because your, your turning axis is low versus a higher uh, uh, moment of inertia there to, for, uh, for turning, which, which, you know, makes it harder to turn at speed. But this bike, it being big and being bulky, is really easy to handle on the road. So as you know, the Goldwing is made for touring. And, and how are you going to travel without a big tour pack to hold all your stuff? Check this out. 
In the back you have a big lockable cavernous trunk here. You can put two full face helmets in here, uh, your overnight duffel bag, whatever. It, it is lots and lots of storage. The handle to release that's right here under the bottom, but there's two little small handles on either side of that. And those guys, if you pull that handle, will open up your side bags, your saddle bags um, on your um, tour pack. So you've got one over here, and then of course, you got one more over here. So you can carry everything you need. And if you need additional cargo space, how about putting another backpack up here, another uh, duffel bag, strapping it down. You're ready to go for a long trip, weeks at a time. Plenty, plenty of storage. But that's not all the storage. Let me show you some more. So you have additional storage up here on the front. We've got a compartment here. It's not super deep. It's about maybe six, seven inches deep. But big enough to put your cell phone, some knickknacks, whatnot in there. And then it also has an auxiliary cable if you want to uh, hook this up to your iPod or something where it'll play through your stereo system. So that's storage. On the other side, you have a lockable with your, with your ignition key. goes in here, which opens up another storage compartment about the same size. So about the size for your cell phone or whatever you want to put in there. In addition to that storage, your passenger also has cubbies back here that are pretty big, big as my fist at least, to put something in here. And there's also one over here on the other side, uh, same size. So lots of storage. And this one has uh, more storage, a little, a little zip bag here on the back of the uh, backrest for some additional storage. Let me give you a quick walk around of the old Goldwing so you can see exactly how gorgeous this bike is. There's not a scratch on it. Would you believe that I bought this bike for $4,000? I don't know. I think that's a pretty good smoking hot deal on this. Running perfect. Zero things wrong with it other than the back speakers crackle a little bit. I might need to have a new speaker system put in, but let me show you around this bike. So let's take a look from the cockpit on this bike. There is a lot going on here. So down here on this side, on the uh, left side, you've got a headlight adjustment, which you need if you have an, a passenger on, which will cause the back end to squat. Might cause your high beam to be a little bit high on oncoming traffic. You can adjust that here. Hazard light, air ride up and down, and then memory for those settings. So if you ride with uh, your wife, your, your whatever, then you, you maybe have a, a memory setting for uh, your passenger uh, or whatever. So you've got two memory buttons there. Uh, this has running lights on it on the front. Uh, you've got a switch for that. Then you come over to the center console. You've got some radio controls. You've got your volume. And you also have redundant controls over here on the hand, on, the, uh, on your left handlebar. But you can switch from... The CD player, which was in the trunk, this one doesn't have the CD player, but it was an option, a six disc CD train changer in the trunk. You've got AM, FM, these are your presets for your um, stations that you wanna watch, listen to, and then your tuning knob. And then uh, you can switch from your audio from the radio, or you can switch it over to uh, your auxiliary input. This here will switch you to the CB radio, Citizens Band. Uh, and then your intercom. So it has an intercom. Here's the uh, one of the uh, intercom ports where you would plug your helmet in. And the passenger on the back has one as well. And then um, repeat, random, your button for your controls on your CD players. And then, of course, your preset buttons for your stereo. Uh, as we come over to the, uh, to the right handlebar, you'll see you've got on-off switch. You've got cruise control. And this works just like on a car. Turn your cruise control on, and then you've got a set button. You've got an accelerate or a resume button, just like on your car. As soon as you touch the brakes, turns it off. 
this is an absolute must for your touring motorcycle, I'm telling you. And then here you've got the reverse switch and your start button. So to make the bike go into reverse, you have to push this button in and it would latch like that. Well, it can't pop back out. This is one of the, if there is a fault with these older gold wings, it's these buttons on the, on the steering co uh, controls. The latching on these switches doesn't work very well anymore. And so what you have to do is you have to take these apart, clean everything, new dielectric grease inside of them. Don't lose the springs out of them, put them back together and then it'll work like they were new. This button, you should push it in and it should latch. You'll see it pops right back out. Every once in a while, it'll latch. Well, to overcome that, all you have to do is push it in and hold it until on the dash up here, you get an R pops up, which will tell you that you're in reverse. At that point, keep holding it. You can push this reverse button. And instead of starting the bike, the bike will run backwards. Now you can only do that while the bike is running. On the right handlebar, or the, I'm sorry, the left handlebar, you have, again, like we said before, redundant controls. You've got your CB volume up and down, channels on your CB. Uh, you've got your squelch, volume on the radio, up and down. And then uh, tuning for your CD player, if you had it, you can go to the next channel or whatever. And on this, you'll, you'll go to the next preset on your uh, radio. And then a mute button here, on off. That one still latches. And then, of course, your horn button. You have, of course, the... 30th anniversary edition badge in gold. How cool is that? Of course it's gold, it's a gold wing. Okay, and then up here is the dash. So you've got analog gauges, you've got an analog tack, you've got a speedo, and then your uh, temperature and your fuel gauge. Of course, this is water cooled. So we'll flip the key on and look at this uh, display here. See, this bike has 104,000 miles on it. Trip odometer, you got your radio station. It tells you whether you're listening to the CB, your intercom, or your, or your radio. Then if you push the display button here, it will flip over and tell you the outside air temperature today is 68 degrees. It'll tell you your uh, water temp there digitally. And then uh, you got a trip odometer. And then um, the, you got a lot of things you can flip through in your mode button here. You can do illumination. Adjust your clock. Opening ending ceremony. I don't really know what that is, but it must be exciting. <laughs> Why would you never have your opening and ending ceremony on? I think that's when the when your when your ignition switch comes in. Here's your here's your ceremony. Are you ready? Bum bum bum. 30th anniversary edition. And then when you close it. You get the same thing when you turn it off. That's the opening and closing ceremony. So anyway, there's your look at your dashboard. Lots of controls. And then on this one, on this side we have, this is a little aftermarket thing so I put on here. So when you turn the key on, you get a little voltmeter here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Well, you probably can't. There it is. You can see your voltage on there. And then you have these little light switches for some uh, underglow lighting, you know, some really classy stuff that somebody added on there. I don't even think those work on this bike, but something else for me to fix. And then, of course, I've got a cup holder, which you can adjust the angle on or whatever. Um, I haven't found a cup that fits this really good yet, but there it is. Finally, I want to say thanks for tuning in and watching the video. I was pleased to show you my uh, 05 Goldwing. Man, if you get a chance, you got to go drive one of these. You will not regret it. Hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here on the Engineer Channel. Let's go for a little ride, and I'll show you what, what you're gonna what you're gonna look like on your Goldwing as you go down the highway. Let's go. Hey, when you go out riding, be sure and wear a bright color clothes so you don't get run over. Stay safe out there. Let's go see what we can do.
always a good day when you can get out and go for a ride, isn't it?